Hello and welcome to another installment of CSO Executive Sessions Australia. I'm Ed Kennedy, the editor of CSO Australia, and I'm very pleased to be joined today by Eugene Ostapenko, Head of Information Security, Risk and Compliance at Ilion Australia in New Zealand. Eugene, welcome. Uh, thanks, Ed. Uh, good to be here. I'm glad that, uh, um, you know, to share my expertise and, and thoughts about their, the information security industry within Australia and help our listeners and watchers to improve their security practices where I can. To start, can you tell us a little about your role? My role as a head of information security risk and compliance for Elon, Australia, and New Zealand. I manage the end-to-end -end information security for the company and uh, protect their inf the security of um, our information. Just to give you a bit more context about Ilion, uh, we are we store and process their uh, data of about 25,000, 25 million um, records of the individual uh, individuals in Australia and about two million records of their companies. Uh, we use this information to produce uh, risk scores for the consumers and the commercial entities. So, what risk score is in effect is the is the value from a zero to one thousand, telling the financial players in the industry on on the on the risk exposure uh, of, of a particular applicant. As an example, if a person wants to uh, receive a, a, a bank loan, uh, the bank would reach out to ourselves or one of our competition uh, and will request the credit rating score, which we would share based on the individual's um, financial transactions over preceding periods. So we do recognize the importance of, their, um, of the services we provide and the sensitivity of the information we held. Thus, we're actually playing, um, paying a particular um, attention to security, accuracy of the data we have. In order to achieve that, I do run um, an information security team. We have about 12 people in the team. However, just to be clear, the way that information security in Elon is, is run is we run a specific information security team, but also I rely on their quite an extensive network of my uh, business and technology stakeholders outside of the security. What can you share with us about Ilion's current goals in the cybersecurity space? So our goals on the um, on the information security program is to protect the information that we have. As I said earlier, you know the information is quite sensitive, and there's a quite quite a number of records that we need to pretend. So the primarily goal for our information security function is to make us a difficult target. Similar to uh, any organization in the world that hackers also work on the return on investment. So the harder organization is to compromise their lower risk uh, that the average attackers would attempt or even be succeeded, succeeding, even succeed uh, to, uh, to penetrate the organization. So uh, over the past few years, um, at least five years since I've, since I've been in the organization, we invested and we continue heavily invest in information security. So we have obtained independent certifications like your ISO 27000 001, SOC2, uh, PCI DSS. What we will do is um, we will continue extending that certification. We will continue providing independent assurance of our information security practices and what we do to protect this information. We will continue building our security across, across the enterprise and that will include you know, technical controls, administrative controls, and um, uh, personal controls. Uh, what we will do in this financial year or last financial year, FY23, Elon has commenced a substantial cloud migration program. So along with that, our information security practice had to pivot uh, to be more cloud oriented. So cloud first strategy, we're investing a lot in um, building and making our cloud uh, footprints secure. As well as that, and that includes their um, the information security controls and procedures we're building. Uh, we also will be focusing on uh, improving uh, return on investment in existing products. So, in in this financial climate, it is paramount that security also takes um, an active role in preserving the organization value and playing their part into making sure that the organization stay profitable and maintain their margins. So security is not different. So we will be focusing on uh, ROIs. 
Uh, the last thing uh, in, we also will be focusing on improving and easing access to our systems through building our I custom identity access management program. So we have initiated some of the projects last financial year, which will continue running as a program in this financial year. Safeguarding user identity in the digital age is already important and set to become even more important going forward. For anyone in our audience not yet familiar with what your organization does, Eugene, can you provide an overview? Elon is a credit rating agency. As I said earlier, what the credit agency does is we receive the financial transaction history of both individuals and the commercial entities. We put this into databases and we process uh, those transactions generating a score. So each individual who has a, a financial record in Australia would have a score associated with them and similar applies to the commercial entities, i.e. the organizations. So we are an essential element of their financial industry. So if the banks don't have access to this information, they will not be able to uh, issue um, credits to individuals and the companies. So the role we play um, is, is crucial, as I said, uh, to maintain the financial industry. We're not the only ones in that industry. There are others competition, but uh, it's, it's a very small world. The paramount objective of our information is its accuracy. So we do have uh, systems and processes to make sure that the information is accurate. So individuals, and particularly in this, in this climate of our of recent security breaches, we want to make sure that we have our up-to-date and accurate information about all of their credit requests uh, that applied to the individuals. People can go to our website and they can get register for their get your free credit, get your free credit report. There is a section of our website where everyone can log in and see what is their credit score, what what were the uh, the contributing factors to this score. And should, should need be, they can dispute that. And then, uh, then we will take the appropriate actions to remediate this. We also provide a services, which is called a credit record ban and credit file ban. It is, we use that uh, in some recent security breaches where individuals can, again, register on the website and they can freeze their credit file for a period of time. What that freeze does is uh, then no one can have access to this file. And we work with our with other players in, in, the, in the credit um, ratings sector to actually to exchange this information. So that we found that quite useful after the breaches where individuals can actually put a freeze on their file, thus preserving the information from misuse. We work extensively with our, our customers, banks and other financial uh, industry players to provide this information and uh, they can request information and, and uh, they can work with their customers to validate some of the suspicious, for example, loan applications and other things. But the criticality, for, the critical thing for us, again, is, is the accuracy of information. Security, absolutely. Uh, but for the individuals, it is more important that the information is correct and up-to-date. 2023, of course, follows a very, very eventful one for cybersecurity in 2022. How would you reflect on the year that was? Thanks, Ed. So 2022 was, in my opinion, not much different to the years preceding 2020, 2021. We have seen some high-profile security breaches. We have seen uh, high-profile vulnerabilities discovered, high-profile exploits being released to the public. So in a way that uh, is a sort of normal or standard year for the information security. What we have actually seen, one of their new developments of 2022 is we've seen an increased impact, increased focus on their compromises associated with identity, uh, especially customer identities and, and the workforce identities. That was something that obviously becoming a trend uh, within, within the attackers uh, communities. We've seen skill shortages in 2022. We've seen, uh, we've seen some of their, um, you know, the, the industry developments trying to compensate. A lot of people started to work overseas, trying to work offshore. So that that's, uh, I think, post-COVID era, 2021 and 2022, we're starting to see more and more of the seismic shift in, in the way that we run the information security programs, how we protect the organization data, especially, you know, uh, with the, within those constraints, but also enabling our business and uh, users of the organizations to, to work you know, remotely and to work everywhere they want. 
How do you see 2023 shaping up in the months ahead for cybersecurity? Well, similar to 2022, I don't think 2023 will be materially different. There are a couple of takeaways from uh, from 2022, and they're you know as a, as we're coming into you know second half of the 2023. I think one of the biggest takeaways is that uh, protection of the organization assets becoming more expensive for two reasons. Obviously, I mentioned their, the shortage, the skill shortages. Then we have our uh, exchange rate uh, hitting Australia. Alongside with that, we do have their, their interest rises. So InfoSec becomes more expensive to the organization to maintain, and yet there is more demand on security. You know, those high-profile breaches of recent, they haven't come unnoticed by the boards and uh, the executives. So they want to invest more. And frankly, as a as information security practitioner, I always encourage more investment in information security. But as they're on the other side, on the other side, as the information security practitioners and managers, we should be aware that you know th- those those funds are not free. So we have to focus on making sure that you know those investments are made wisely and uh, make sure that, that we uh, do receive the return on investment. In 2023, coming back to your specific question, I think we will see pretty much more of the same what we have seen in the years before. I think we will see more uh, security breaches, even in Australia, as much as it's painful for me to say that I think the Australian companies will continue to be targeted by the adversaries. We will see more of that. We will have more vulnerabilities to address. We will still be uh, playing that fine balance between you know, the need to protect the organization and providing their, the business the flexibility they require to be successful in the markets. What pleases you about the current state of cybersecurity in Australia? Um, I think in, in the information security in Australia, I think we generally, we have a very good smart people here. And that's, that's by far the, the biggest uh, value and the, and the biggest factor in how the country and each organization can, can protect themselves. I mean, through building our own skills as well as their net immigration there are some real nuggets and there are some, some real skills, especially if the people coming from overseas. So we have this cross-pollination with the Australian skills base, which is good. What we also see that is, uh, I think the message to, you know, the, particularly about the recent security breaches, the messages uh, to our boards and to the executives are started to think in about their importance of the information security. It doesn't mean that... Um, it wasn't heard before, but now with their changes in the legislation, you know, with their specific use cases and specific domestic uh, fines levied on, on certain organizations, it really helps the information security practitioners such as myself to, uh, to deliver the messages to the board, to deliver the messages to their, to their executive team. It's, it's always helpful to, to have that external validation of the security. What else? I think this also, what pleases me, based on reading some of the materials across in, in, the, in the press, is many, opportunity, many organizations took the opportunity to look at their security again. So each time we have a high security breach, what happens internally, the security teams look into their own backyard and then they're looking at improving their practices on the real live events. So what we have seen and what I think is good is a lot of, uh, a lot of organizations actually took a pause and looked at, the, at their breach response plans. Uh, they took a pause, looked at their, you know, their identity access management practices. They, looked at, um, uh, they took a pause to look at their, their externally exposed assets. And in general, what pleases me t- that the organization as a con- uh, sorry, the Australia as a country becomes a harder target. And as I earlier said, you know, the harder the target, the less chances the the attackers will be interested to compromise us. What concerns you about the Australian cybersecurity landscape at present? What work do you think remains to be done? Well, I think we we just need to continue. And um, what concerns me is a few things, really. The first one is we are 
it's a good and bad thing, but we are relying on the skilled immigration to uh, maintain the security skills in Australia. That, that skill shortage is over the past 12 to 13 months, 14 months, but we still have a shortage of their skilled individuals. And then generally, you know, we have, a, we have a difficulty finding people within the information security, especially in the you know, small to uh, mid-sized organizations. My second concern is about the corporate memory. You know, we have security breaches in year 2023 and early, uh, early 2020, sorry, 2022 and early 2023. We've seen some high profile breaches. Those breaches tend to generate a lot of activities, as I was saying earlier, and uh, improvements in information security practices. But generally speaking, the corporate memory is, is not long. So you ask um, some individuals in a year, on the track and the, the memory will be distant. So it is important to actually to maintain, to maintain the, the message and also build the information security programs which are agnostic to the high security breaches. So they don't have to change with, their, with the media coverage of a, no, of a new vulnerability discovered or exploited vulnerability or the breach. So that absence of reactiveness or, or strategic direction, it's, it's, uh, it's paramount for the security um, practitioners. What also concerns me is, as, and it's not a concern, it's, it's a reality. I mean, we do have to, as I was saying, operate within, within the context of the organization. So my concern is that many organizations will have themselves at a, a very difficult situations where their security expenses coming up while their, their revenues are going down. Or, or, uh, and that's, that's, I think that's, that will also be a, pretty much a, a difficult situation for a, lot, for a lot of practitioners out there. When it comes to the greater use of AI going forward, can you share with us your thoughts on what impact it will have, for better or worse, as it concerns identity theft? Yeah, it's a very interesting question, Ed. I think artificial intelligence will have a twofold impact on, on the industry and on each individual. With with the advent of the AI, what we will see, we will see uh, more security threats. You know, so adversaries they use similar processes and technologies that we use to to protect the the value or protect our data. So I think what we will see is we will see increase in their uh, in the security breaches that could be attributed to AI. We will see more malware. We will see more variants of the malware. So. Overall, the velocity of the threats will, will, will start increasing. And at some point in time, as they are becoming more and more adopted, not through our marketing materials, but actually embedded into the products and the practices, we'll see uh, quite a substantial increase in, in the attacks and the velocity of those attacks. Also interesting, what I was thinking is that AI will also make some of the security controls obsolete. A good example about... Um, about this particular um, aspect is um, security awareness training. So if you look at uh, a typical spam security awareness material, they said, well, the emails that, you know, what to watch when you receive, uh, what, what to look for in, um, in a spam email or phishing email. And they would say, yeah, badly worded emails, typically written by, <laughs> by non-native speakers, spelling mistakes. That's no longer the case. So the AI and uh, the, the various tools to help people write better, they misused by the adversaries to write a very nicely developed emails that, you know, even, even if sometimes the information security teams cannot even compete with. And that makes, makes the life for ourselves and our people we need to protect is much, much more harder because that becomes, the, 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 they're becoming much more, close to, to what we would normally do. And uh, it will be difficult to ascertain what, what is the truth email. If you're looking about, you know, the, the, some of their uh, deep fakes video, it's really, really becoming very difficult. And as I said, some of the controls will become obsolete. So we have to pivot to other set of controls that also could be impacted by AI at some point in time. And that's where, um, uh, where the benefit, I think, for the information security, again, from, from the same is it inevitably will improve their efficiency and effectiveness of the information security teams. 
Yeah. So with, with the AI, it will generate that almost like a virtual assistant, a virtual person will actually help the teams to go through their through that increase of their of the velocity I was saying earlier faster. So we'll have a better tool. We'll have a better processes. We'll have ourselves better better training materials because we will be using the same same machine learning <laughs> to actually to develop. We will we will probably write better policies and and adopt to that. So on the on the balance, I think we will be still impacted by continuing of continuation of actually moving to a higher value task within information security. So the the, the teams will have to upskill. To maintain, to make sure that they provide this value where AI cannot provide. So I think we will do less or fewer tasks that relate to the mundane and boring tasks. The systems will help us, but then it comes with the opportunity, but also with the with the demand to uh, to analyze the data and that that human intervention, AI assistant human intervention, to actually to detect and respond to uh, respond to the threats. What insights would you share with cybersecurity professionals keen to learn more from another professional in their field? The biggest insight I would like to share with the practitioners is their infos- infosec is not about tools. Infosec is not about you know the processes or technologies. The information security is about people. So building relationship within technology, outside of technology, you know, with your business stakeholders is paramount for the success of the information security practices. Far too often I, I do speak to the information security managers, to my peers, and, and I see them being internally focused on the technologies. I, I got this, you know, the new tool and uh, I've got this new process implemented and I'm very happy with that. But how does it help the organizations as a whole? Does your stakeholders outside of IT, security, actually recognize the value you bring? And that, that, that's, that's something that um, I see still needs to improve. I, I've touched on the building relationship, you know, a simple way of just coming to the office. I mean, I'm working from home today, but I will be in office tomorrow. And I found that that's invaluable, especially for the information security to be, to be visible, to be heard, uh, to be approachable, and to provide a constructive feedback and also uh, supported by their the options to solve the issues. So those those are the, the important ones. I was talk, talking a lot about being part of the business and recognizes the business objectives, business drivers, and making sure that the security sub- enables and supports the business objectives, not, not the broad mic. And sometimes we do, but most of the time I would try to and then encourage the teams to work and, and see how the security and business can align as well, to, as, well as uh, maybe enable some of the business services. Persistence is another trait of a good information security. So we we talked about 2022, 2023, the threats and and the impacts. I think what I encourage everyone in the infosec industry is to to be persistent. Yes, I was speaking about the corporate memory and it's it's a daily grind that we all have to go and repeat, reemphasize the messages drive the tasks to the outcomes, sometimes um, overcome the resistance, but the persistence is the, is the winner with information security. And then uh, the last thing is connecting the dots. So I talked about, you know, the, the understand the organization contact, but connecting the dots in my mind is about finding the role the information security plays within the organization enabling the organization, enabling the achievements objective, and also be that conduit between sometimes um, the business stakeholders and the technical stakeholders and uh, realizing where they're identifying and realizing the InfoSec value. As an example, there might be a, a particular business problem where the InfoSec can help. Identity access management is a good one, for example. It, it, everybody will, will jump on board. There might be some other areas where the security can help to solve a business problem and to reduce the organizational risk rather than technology risk. So those are the, the things I'd love to, li- uh, to leave our watchers and listeners with. And with that last question, that brings us to the end of this conversation. Thank you to those in our audience and Eugene, a special thanks to you for taking part in this chat. 
Thank you, Ed. Glad to be here. Thanks for your interest and uh, hope everyone stays safe and secure. Just as this has been a great conversation here, please keep an eye out for another instalment soon of CSO Executive Sessions Australia.